You have these two natures here. That this is God and this is man and it is one person with two natures. And when I say that Jesus has two natures, I mean more than simply he doesn't look like Joseph, he looks like God. You know, that's, I, I mean more than just he's going to take on the attributes of Mary. I mean he really does have two distinct natures in him. He has the substance of Mary. Everything about Mary that is human comes to Jesus. Jesus isn't half human and half God. Oh no, he is fully from his mother. Any more than one of your children you could say is half you and half your, your husband or half me and half my wife. No, it's your, your child is all of you. Well, Jesus is that. He's in that sense all of Mary. Everything about Mary's humanity is seen in Jesus Christ. There is nothing about being a human that Jesus doesn't have. He really is a human being. He really is. Is it part of human nature to be in the image of God? Then Jesus is in the image of God. Is it part of human nature to have dominion on the earth? Then Jesus will have dominion on the earth. Is it part of human nature to worship God? Then Jesus will worship God. Is it part of human nature to have to learn? Then Jesus will learn. Is it part of human nature to eat? Was there food in the garden? Amen. Better food than you think too. And Jesus will eat. Is it part of human nature to drink? Then Jesus will drink. Is it part of human nature to be dependent upon your parents for life? Then so will Jesus be. He will crawl. He will learn to talk. He will learn things at school. He will have to grow up. Because that's what being a human is. Everything essential to human nature is real in its full sense in Jesus Christ. Is it part of human nature to be a sinner? Well, no, because Adam and Eve had a full human nature before they sinned. This is the Latin phrase, very deus, very homo, that Jesus is truly God and truly man. Everything about the nature of mankind is true in Jesus. But also, because he is the second person of the Trinity, incarnate, in flesh, everything true about the divine nature is true about Jesus. In the same way he's truly human, he's also truly God. Is it part of God's nature to be omnipotent, to be able to do everything? Yes, then Jesus is omnipotent. Is it part of divine nature to be omniscient, to know everything? Yes, then Jesus is omniscient. Is it part of divine nature to be omnibenevolent? Yes, and so Jesus is omnibenevolent. Have you ever met a baby who is omnibenevolent? No, but Jesus was. Now, how can these two things both be true? How can I stand here and say that Jesus would have to learn to speak and that he is omniscient? That Jesus would be omnibenevolent and yet cry because he was hungry and needed to nurse? How can they both be true? And this has led theologians to say something that I think is absolutely essential to our understanding of Christ, that he had two natures and that he could operate freely between both of them. Picture a two-story townhome. And you can live on the ground floor and you can live on the second floor and you can go up and down between the two as you see fit. That's how Jesus is with both of his natures. They're both in him. His natures don't mix. If you tried to mix divinity and humanity, the humanity would be diluted. They don't mix. They don't cancel each other out. They're both there in their true form and he can live freely between both of them. And this is the key part of that understanding. He will live freely between both of them in a way that does not nullify either of them. Let me tell you what I mean by that. When he's taking a spelling test in school, he will actually learn how to spell naphtali. He won't just access his divine omniscience to get a good grade on the test. <laughs> When he is a baby, he will actually be dependent upon his parents. He won't just create manna to eat. When he's tempted in the wilderness, he will actually resist the devil. 
with a human obedience and a human righteousness that Adam and Eve had. He will actually resist the devil in that way and not call the angels to come minister to him. He will, that will happen when the temptation is over. That is what he does. He, cannot, he can see the Nathaniel sitting under the tree. He knows where the fish are in the pond. He knows which one has the coin in its mouth. He can do all of those things. He can curse the fig tree and it withers. He can raise the dead. He can give life to the little girl. He can do all of those things because he is God. Of course he can do those things. But he will do those things in a way that doesn't nullify his humanity.